Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we learn how to render crocodile leather using easy techniques and very affordable stationeries. So here I've listed down the materials or the stationeries that I've used to render the crocodile leather bag and the crocodile leather trench coat. So first off I'll start by sketching out the layout of my design. The simple lines of my uh, leather crocodile leather bag and then I'll put in some details the details of the le crocodile leather skin now if you've noticed a crocodile leather skin it has blocks on it so the block sizes ranges from small size to big size right so here for, for my crocodile leather bag I'm used going to use both the uh, sizes the small sizes on the either sides of the bag and the bigger blocks on the middle of the uh, bag so yeah and then for the flaps I've used the small sizes and also for the buckle area for the strap also I've used the small size blocks so yeah this is what makes crocodile skin uh, so unique because of its um, design so after sketching out my crocodile leather bag, just sketching out my crocodile leather bag, I'll sketch out the trench coat, the crocodile leather trench coat. So for the uh, trench coat, what I've decided is I kind of want, want to make it look a little bit puffed up, right? I want the uh, blocks or the, you know, the effect to be a little bit raised. So for that, I'll use only bigger blocks for my trench coat so that it gives a little bit raised effect and also it looks a bit puffed up so after i'm done sketching out my trench coat i'll go back to my leather bag crocodile leather bag and start with the wet on wet technique which means that first we need to apply water using our brush and then we apply paint over it so one thing we need to keep in mind while we are using this technique is we do not let the paper dry up quickly or we do not apply the uh, coats of colors after the area is dried up so we need to keep on applying paint after we've put uh, applied water on it and keep on applying paint uh, over the areas where you want to give a shadow effect you decide your light source for me the light source is the front uh, area of the back like it's coming directly onto the back so for that I am giving in the shadows and also keep on checking tap using your fingers on the uh, area on your uh, illustrated area and check whether the dryness or the wetness of the your of the you know illustrated area is perfect for you to apply the next coat so here now I'm just trying to give in the details of the blocks of the leather uh, crocodile leather blocks using my paint and make it more prominent make the blocks more prominent so yeah the sides as I've already mentioned are small blocks and the middle of the bag has bigger blocks also after I have applied these blocks I am kind of giving another layer of shadow to it because what happens when you're using a wet on wet technique or in that or for that case if you're using uh, watercolors watercolors uh, for uh, illustrating your product you do not worry about the highlights because you can always manage your highlights but the shadow are the areas where you, do, you need to work on you need to apply coatings on the areas where you're planning to give shadows and leave the areas where you are planning to give highlight one key rule about using watercolors or the wet on wet technique is that we do not apply a lot of color on the places where we are planning to show highlights here i'm using a corrector or a whitener to show a little more raised effect or you know highlighted area of my leather bag uh, the whitener might give a little overwhelming effect of its whiteness but nothing to worry about we'll use another technique to subside that and which will give a very realistic effect a very realistic crocodile leather effect so I'm using my paint once more to give another layer of shade over my product and now I'm using my sketch pen to give another layer of 
uh, shadow shade and shadow and make the blocks the crocodile blocks little more prominent and little shadows under the um, blocks so yeah now I'm using my pencil color red pencil color to give a little bit more shadow and now I'm using my red color pencil and shading over the places where I had applied whitener so as you can see it kind of subtly subsided the overwhelming whiteness of the whiteners subsided and it's giving a very natural look a very realistic look now I'm using my pencil to give uh, the end details the end shades and now coming to the trench coat as I already mentioned earlier in this video that I want to give a raised effect a puffed up effect on my trench coat so for that I'm using the bigger blocks of the crocodile leather which will kind of give a raised effect so after I have given in the details sketched in the details of the uh, crocodile leather on my trench coat I'll again start by use, applying water uh, on the area on my trench coat sketch and then I'll apply uh, the paint which is also known as the wet on wet technique so as you can see I'm using the first applying the first tone so after applying the first tone I'll again give in a bit of shade uh, wherever I feel I should give in and also considering the light source I'm assuming the light source is kind of uh, from the opposite side uh, of the trench coat and uh, yeah that's how I'm giving fill in, in in the shade and shadow once I'm done painting my trench coat I'll use uh, a similar color sketch pen to give in uh, or to make the blocks prominent you can keep on applying uh, the tones the uh, color tones over your illustration till you get your desired results but since we're using uh, kind of cheap materials so make sure if you're using a, a notepad sheet or a notepad paper do not apply lots of paint lots of water as it will uh, smudge a lot so yeah I'm using my sketch pen a similar color sketch pen to make the uh, blocks prominent and yeah again I'll put another layer of shadow another layer of shade on my trench coat so as I mentioned earlier that I want to make give it a puffy look for that I am going to use my pencil and uh, give an outline but a little bit away from my original sketch there will be a gap, there will be a gap between my orig original sketch and the outline so that it looks kind of bulky, kind of puffed. So yeah, that's the trick you can use for your illustrations too. It doesn't take too much time, it's just that uh, you need watercolors and sketch pen and a pencil, that's it. And yeah, I'm giving in a little more shades using my pencil you can use color pencil if you have or if you desire so yeah that's it so if you found this tutorial useful do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe thank you